Hi friends, I'm Elena from the Tiny Pandora Design Team and today I'm going to show you how to make this fortune cookie box that you can keep your fortunes in. And I hope you enjoy it. Hello, welcome to fortune cookie boxes. Today I'm going to be using this black matte tin box kit from tinypandora.com and I'm going to show you a few of the other items from Tiny Pandora that I will be using to make this box. Our design team, uh, we each made a different box this month for the month of August and mine is to hold fortunes. I used to have a little fortune cookie box that just kind of, it looked like a Chinese takeout box and I used to save my fortunes in it. I don't know if other people do that, <laughs> but I just thought it might make a fun project. And when I saw the black matte tins, it just came to mind. And I also thought it would be really fun to make a polymer clay fortune cookie. So I did. During the process of, of making this, I also learned a lot about the history of fortune cookies. I used the uh, Mega Blade to make this as well, which I'm showing here, Tiny Mighties. Um, and uh, the Easy Bangle template. I used to make the side of the tin. I used a Boss Mega Roller. Um, you can see also the Tiny Pandora oven mitt. So pretty much, and the glass mat. <laughs> I used a couple other things too, but um, you know, you use what you got and that's what I've got here the business we are in making stuff and making things to make stuff with so here I'm just showing you the box and the fortunes within it and this was before I did the sides also showing you the fortune cookie I'm gonna show you how to make a fortune cookie which is really really fun I watched um, a tutorial over and over to learn how to make fortune cookies. I watched a tutorial that just taught you how to make real ones that you can eat. And I thought, I'm going to try to do that with polymer clay. So I kind of adapted it a little bit and you will see later in the video. That is a crew um, Sculpey and then just white and they're both Primo. You can see Jolene in the little corner of this video several times. My baby daughter, she likes to help us. So here we have me rearranging things endlessly, but I'm just showing you that you're going to make a sheet of white to make your lid. And I tried to make it look like the folded paper takeout container. So that's why it's got the white background and I used the bottom of the tin to cut out a circle it works as a cutter you just clean it up a little bit with your blade um, after you set your tin on it then I apply it to the top of the lid here and I'm gonna also show you how I add the little grommet I'm showing you the grommet here and the grommet is where the little metal handles would normally go in there. But I thought this project was 3D enough without the handles. <laughs> I think you guys get the impression that I'm going for. So here I'm just showing you that I'm smoothing the top a little bit. And I, and I do bake the clay onto the, to the lid. And I'm showing you the little guide line that I'm making. That guideline is going to be where I'm actually going to slice the clay in half after I bake it. 
It might seem a little bit odd or backwards to do it this way, but through trial and error, I have found that it makes it look the most like a paper takeout container when I do it that way. So now I'm using the little ferrules that come with our matte black box kit and the needle to clear out the the grommet, the clay that gets in the grommet when you put it in. And I'm adding the grommet to the clay before I bake it. <laughs> One of the times that I made this, I forgot to add the grommet until I had already put the top in the oven. So I ran over there and tried to add it and I thought, ah, I got it just in time. And then I get it out of the oven and it has a big crack. So that didn't work. So I, I came to the conclusion, definitely don't forget to put your grommet in before you bake your top. There are other things you can do after you bake it, but not that. Okay, so I'm just smoothing it a little bit more. You can kind of endlessly smooth it and it never ends up perfectly smooth. I'm not one of those people who can make things look like a machine made it, but maybe someday. But I kind of just have always maintained that I like things to look like I made them with my hands. And I do. I do. I still think it turns out pretty cool. I like it. So I'm smoothing it a little bit more and I'm going to throw it in the oven now. And, and it's, I'm using a little toaster oven in our studio here and it's 275 and I baked it for 30 minutes tented with foil. Okay. So while I do that, while I bake that, I'm going to show you how to make your fortune cookie. And this might be my favorite part. <laughs> This was so challenging. I, I tried so many different things until I could get it just right. And once I did, I felt like a magician. <laughs> it seems like such a simple thing, but when you're adapting a, um, you know, a food recipe to polymer clay, polymer clay acts very different than actual cookie dough. So the way that they make these cookies and the reason that I'm smoothing the edges like I am here in the video is that they they pour out like a spoonful of this batter that's kind of a thin pancakey batter and they pour out a spoonful on their baking pan or baking sheet and um, and they kind of round it out and it looks a bit like a pancake and as you know pancakes thin out on their edges and have a few little bubbles so I tried to make these have a little bit of a cracking, bubbling looking effect when I was done with them so that they looked more like real fortune cookies. And I also tried to smooth out the edges before adding the fortune to the center. Now I made these mock fortunes to bake inside of it to fill out the clay and give it that fortune cookie shape. You just fold it over in the taco. The mock fortunes are made of patty wax, like you would use to separate burger patties. Now you're going to fold your fortune cookie over the lip of a cup into a fortune cookie shape. Okay, so now as you can see, it has become a fortune cookie. And as though it was magic. It seems simple enough in the video, but you may take a few times trying it. Um, I know I did. And then once you have it in that shape, you want to bake it in a, I used a cute little bowl also from Tiny Pandora, but you, you guys can use anything that you have that's like that. Some people use cupcake cups when they make real fortune cookies. Um, some people use, um, you know, a regular little bowl or a little cup that you have. The important thing with this, it's not, it's not as dire as it would be if it was made of cookie dough um, because the cookie dough tends to spread back out the clay doesn't but it's still nice to make sure that you keep that nice fortune cookie shape that you work to make so baking it in a bowl helps to do that and that little mock fortune that I put in there is made of patty wax um, the it's like a like a wax paper sheet that I cut folded and cut into a fortune cookie length of paper and then uh, I pull it out after I bake it here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the pagoda on the side. Now, as you can see, I've already begun drawing the first two sections of the pagoda. 
So I'm going to show you guys the third and fourth sections of the pagoda. I also learned a lot about pagodas during this process, which I will share with you guys. This image that is on the side of um, Chinese takeout containers is actually um, an icon, an image of a real place which was the porcelain tower of Nanjing in China and it was one of the wonders the seven wonders of the medieval world um, along with like the Great Wall of China the Colosseum um, and it was made entirely of porcelain you guys I mean if you can just imagine like a, a temple, a building several stories high and made entirely of porcelain. It must have just been breathtaking. And it was built in the 15th century. And it had images of animals, flowers, bamboo, landscapes, and Buddhist images on porcelain tile all over and all throughout the entire building. And I wish I could have been there to see it in person. It was um, destroyed in the 19th century and later rebuilt in the same spot in 2010. So there is a Tower of Nanjing standing still in its place, uh, it's just not the original. But I thought that was pretty fascinating. Growing up looking at these takeout containers, I just thought you know, it was an image of, of a Chinese building. But I didn't know the history of it. And in making this project, I like to learn when I'm making a project as much as I can about the subject matter. And I just thought this was pretty fascinating. <laughs> so I thought I'd share that with you while we make it. And um, as you can see, I've completed the side now. What I do is I, I drew out the design in sections all along. Since the shape of this box is not the same as the takeout box, I went ahead and drew it in sections along the side with a colored pencil, or I'm sorry, a mechanical pencil, and then a fine tip and regular tip red sharpie. I tried doing this with paint as well, but it didn't look like it was printed on there the way it looked when I used the sharpie. So that's what led me to switch to the red sharpies. Here I'm going to show you the, the creation of the lid, the, the folded takeout container lid. So after you get your lid out of the oven, you pop it off of the top and cut it in half with the mega blade or with your blade. Okay, then um, I got out my little sanding sanding block. I have like a, a square piece of lucite that I have put a sandpaper sticker on and I use that to sand pretty much whatever I need to sand and it stays in place really well and it works great. So you'll see that in a moment. We're going to try to carry those in the store too just for convenience sake because I know it's frustrating when we show you something that we have that you can't get. So we're going to try to carry those. Just have to order them up and make them up for you. So here I'm showing you the little sandpaper block that I use. And I'm just getting the, um, the little edges, the little frayed edges, the little imperfections off of the side so that it looks more like a paper folded container. And since I'm talking about the paper folded container, I will also give you a little bit more um, history of that. Um, even though these are known as Chinese takeout containers in, in America and we all associate them with Chinese food, they were not invented by the Chinese. In fact, nor was the fortune cookie. Chinese takeout containers um, were created, invented, and folded out of one sheet of paper and are still to this day made of one piece of paper. When they're folded you can lay them out like a plate after it's unfolded. But it was invented by Frederick's Weeks Wilcox and 
he made it originally as an oyster pail. It was inspired, the design by, was inspired by Japanese origami. And it was meant to basically, you know, carry oysters and not leak. And it was created in 1894. Can you believe that? It's been a really long time. But the design that we now know that actually has the lettering and the pagoda on the side, that started in the 1970s. So, a little bit of info about the Chinese takeout container for you. Stuff you never thought you wanted to know, right? But I thought pretty interesting stuff. Also, fortune cookies were invented originally by the Japanese, not the Chinese. And they used to contain miso and sesame oil and be more of a savory, like a cracker. In fact, their original name translates to cracker. And they used to be much larger and have the fortune tucked in the outside knuckle. Thought that was pretty interesting too. Now we make them sweeter, a little bit sweeter, and uh, tuck the fortune inside. There used to be um, lots of foods in Japan and like treats that had fortunes in them, like little messages, but people were eating them by accident. <laughs> so, so they stopped doing that as much. Silly, silly facts. All right, so here I'm showing you the lettering for the top. Um, after you've glued your pieces in place the way you like them so that they look like the folded box, I like to place the fortune cookie that I've made, you know, on the top so that I don't end up having a hard time placing it afterward. So I'm kind of doing my initial lettering with a mechanical pencil with that fortune cookie sitting there, like at least getting the first letters in place so they know that it won't the words won't be totally covered up by the fortune cookie once I'm all done drawing it and also you know it just helps to make sure that you're the composition of the whole thing is the way you like it before you get it all done and glued in place so here I'm doing the lettering for enjoy and again I do that in pencil first just use a little mechanical pencil and then after I get it all um, written out um, and drawn I just I just look at my little example while I do it once I get it all written out I outline it with the fine tip sharpie and then color it in fill it in the rest of the way with the regular regular tip red sharpie. I didn't test any other type of permanent markers besides sharpie on this, so I can't necessarily recommend any other kind, but I think most of the permanent markers you can get that are similar to sharpie would do the job. I like sharpies because it kind of has a tendency to react with the clay in such a way that it looks like it was printed on there and that was what I really wanted. I didn't want it to have a raised or indented texture too much. I didn't want it to emboss it or be raised up. That's why I didn't use paint. <clears throat> so here, outlining with the fine tip sharpie. Now you don't necessarily, oh, there's Jolene again. You don't necessarily have to um, do yours your words to be exactly like this. It doesn't have to say thank you and enjoy. Um, it can say whatever you want it to say. I just um, did it like this so that it would be as reminiscent of the Chinese takeout boxes as it could be. Um, also with regard to the fortune, if you see um, on the box that's in the bottom right corner of the screen there, um, I printed that fortune on like a pearlescent um, kind of thicker uh, scrapbooking paper and it says do what you love. I was trying to find a fortune, one of the classic fortunes that's, that actually is in fortune cookies that I could put and have just half of it showing and may have it still make sense. And I thought that one was apropos of what we do here. I think we do what we love and so. 
that's why I chose that one. The rest of the fortune uh, says, and the rest will fall into place. So I thought that was pretty cool, a cool sentiment. And so I made, I printed it out on um, the pearlescent scrapbooking paper and I uh, cut it out with the little paper cutter and made my little fortune for that one. On these other boxes in the interest of saving, saving a little bit of time, I used real fortunes um, for the finished, finished product to show you what it would look like. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Just completing the lettering here um, for thank you. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to show you placing the fortune cookie on the top and um, and then pretty much be finished with the whole enchilada. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this today. And I hope that you guys will subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit the notification button because um, we come out with new videos every Sunday and we have a few uh, new members of the Tiny Pandora design team that will be releasing videos, um, including one of our new members is a little girl and she's pretty awesome. She's a little sculptor. And I can't wait for you guys to meet her. And then we, of course, have Angela Thompson, Paula Eberly, Tracy Jones, Cynthia Kujian, and myself. So uh, next week, let's see, I believe is Tracy Jones' video coming out. And hers is really cool. It's a steampunk tin. So you'll be able to see that. So make sure you hit the notification button and like and subscribe. I hope you want to like and subscribe, <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed watching me make this project. All right, so there you have it. There's the thank you and enjoy. And here I'm just going to show you attaching the fortune cookie. I think that fortune cookie is my favorite one so far. It, it came together. And, and look the most like a fortune cookie. And so far, the, everyone who has seen them in person thought that they were real, real fortune cookies. So that was kind of a good compliment. It's always nice when people, you know, think that what you're making looks like what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> so here we have the fortune cookies attached to the top. And then I'm going to show you just adding a little fortune to it. You can, like I said, make your own fortune. You can print it on paper yourself, or you can use a fortune that you already have. I'm going to add this fortune to my cookie. And now my, my other box there that you see, the one with the do what you love fortune, I glued it in place. Once you decided on your fortune that you want permanent, you can just put a little dot of glue underneath it inside so that it doesn't just come right back out. Okay. And that is pretty much the size of it, my friends. Just showing you where the other fortune cookie is going to go on the other tin. And that's it. There's Jolene helping me make fortune cookies. Those were my little example cookies. <laughs> she was eating them. And then here's three finished tins. 